Hello everyone. Welcome back. Today I want to go over Tesla's recent changes to support right to repair. Um, last time I made a right to repair video, we didn't have much uh, faith that Tesla was doing anything to make it easy for an independent person or shop to repair their cars. But as of late, they've changed this and I want to go over what's available to an owner without paying anything. So uh, here we have the center display of a Model 3. If you go into the software menu here, um, you can see right here where it says Model 3. Um, you just press and hold that for about five seconds. You'll see it flash around your finger and then let go. And then you'll get this please enter access code box. Type service, S-E-R-V-I-C-E, -E, and hit OK. And now we're into the secret service menu. Um, it's not, I guess, not so secret, but here we, we have something that we didn't have before. Um, in here, uh, probably the most important thing is you can view the service alerts. Now, since this is a, a bench computer, it's not going to show any alerts, but if you had anything wrong with your car, they would be here. Now, they don't really, there's no resource for them for explaining what these alerts mean. Um, you just have to learn on your own. But uh, a shop or someone such as me can interpret those alerts and know what they mean. So that's the first step, is getting access to the diagnostics. And that is a powerful function in and of itself. And then we have the software reinstall tab here. Um, if you were to find a problem in your car and replace a module, you can do this software reinstall and that will get you know the, the software that's required on the replacement module and it should then work. So these are two functions that are vitally important to repairing a Tesla. Um, outside of that, there's a lot of stuff in here that can be useful. Um, let's see, yeah, they have a brake burnishing setting. And brake burnishing is just, uh, you know, used to prepare the brake pads. If you replace the brake pads, it also will help uh, deglaze any brake pads that have been glazed. Or let's say your car was parked for a while and had a lot of rust on the rotors. This is a good way to burn that off. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, service settings is just things related to the service menu. Like uh, when you're in service mode, there's a speed limit of seven miles an hour or 11 kilometers per hour. You can override that here. Um, it just disables a lot of the owner's functionality, like so it won't connect to an owner's phone or uh, record on the dash cam and stuff like that. Um, it's just basically bypassing some of the profile functions. Um, so generally you don't really need to do anything in here unless you're going to be driving the car, in which case you'd override that um, limit. I don't recommend you uh, drive the car in service mode unless you have to, like you're doing the brake burnishings. Um, and then over here on the left, we have uh, a driver assist tab. And under that, we have cameras, which will show you the cameras. Now, if this was installed in a car, all these little dots would be green and the GPS would be green, showing you how many satellites it's receiving. Um, DAS's driver assistance system, you can ping it and reset it here. Um, and then sensors is... Uh, like ultrasonic sensors, the radar, and stuff like that. It's just showing the status of all this stuff. So if you have a problem with a sensor, like say your one of your ultrasonic sensors was acting up, you would see it here. Um, right now, these are all showing gray because we're not obviously receiving data from the rest of the systems in the car. And under here, we have infotainment and connectivity. This will show your Wi-Fi, your cell receiver, and stuff like that. Um, like it's showing... And I've only got one antenna connected to this, so it's showing primary antenna normal, um, but secondary antenna open, which is cool. If you're, if you're having trouble with Wi-Fi or cell, you can check the antenna states. 
which is handy. And under high voltage, we have HV system. Now normally this would show you the state of the high voltage battery, its state of charge, the state of the HVIL, which is high voltage interlock loop. I've done a video on that already. The state of the pyrofuse, whether or not the contactors are closed or not, and then stuff in involving, you know, what other high voltage components in the car are receiving power. Um, and back under, or back under this, we have a low voltage menu. There's a power distribution, and this would show you um, your low voltage battery, the current and amps on it, its state of charge. Um, if you have a lithium battery, if you have the lead acid, it won't track state of charge. And then it's also showing you the PCS output, which is normally like doing the alternator function in an EV. It's supplying the 12 volts from the high voltage battery and recharging the low voltage battery. And we have some options under here. Uh, reconnect LV bat is used if your LV battery was disconnected. This pertains mainly to the lithium battery. Reset VC front will reset VC front. So if any E fuses were tripped, that could reset them. Same thing for VC left and VC right. Obviously you have to know which uh, circuits are on which controller. And then clear post-crash load shed when the airbags are deployed um, because the pyrofuse blows, uh, the airbag controller, also known as the RCM, instructs all the controllers in the car to go to a load shed because there's no high voltage to keep the 12 volt system alive and the 12 volt battery will begin dying. So it basically goes into low power state, turning off things like that aren't needed, like your climate control and things like that. <clears throat> so you can get the most out of your 12 volt battery. Um, home link, if you were to want to ret retrofit your home link module, you can do that in here. Um, it will walk you through it. <clears throat> you can test it as well. And under thermal, we have all this stuff which is needed to if you're going to, let's say, had a refrigerant leak and you recharge the system, this will assist you doing that. Definitely don't run any of this stuff in here unless you know what you're doing because you could uh, disable your refrigeration system. Um, but like uh, coolant air purge, if you, you know, had to drain your coolant and, um, you know, fill it back up, you need to run this to get all the air out of the system. But as far as the refrigerant stuff, I would stay away from that. Um, alignment and tires. This lets you check your uh, steering angle offset and things like that. Your tire pressures, which I don't know why they're reading 174 PSI. That's uh, it's a little much. Um, obviously, there's no car here. And you can recalibrate the steering column. Again, don't do any of this unless you have a need to. And then under closures, windows, you can see which windows were calibrated, things like that. You can replace your wiper blades um, and whatnot. Now, if you have uh, another model besides, like this would be the same for Model 3 and Model Y, but let's say you have a plaid, the menus are going to be different in here and have different functions. But uh, that's about the gist of it. Um, they, they have this additional resources where they're telling you can go to service.tesla.com service-subscription and there you can buy a $500 a month subscription to Toolbox 3 and that will give you more functions than this. Um, they've priced that kind of prohibitively for a do-it-yourselfer, you know, but luckily, you know, all you need are both or most of the functions in here to do, you know, general repair on a car. Um, if you were a professional shop, you might want to subscribe to Toolbox for a year, and that's $3,000. I'll uh, do another video on that um, uh, later, and we'll go over that, to, and I'll show you what's in there. But, yeah, basically, they have an additional mode in here uh, called uh, Service Mode Plus that gives you a few extra options, including a CAN signal viewer. And I can, since this is kind of hacked... See, we can go in here and turn that on.
Okay, now it's in service mode plus, which is normally there's no code to enter this. You can only do this if you had the expensive toolbox subscription. But you can see the options have changed here. We've got um, the CAN viewer, and CAN lets you view signals that uh, from the CAN bus directly that Tesla believes uh, wouldn't be harmful. Like, they, they definitely don't show things like um, health of the 12 volt, or the high voltage battery and things because they don't want owners having that information. So they've basically stripped out everything in here that's really useful. Um, so it's mainly just a curiosity. You might use some of these signals if you were you know, doing some advanced troubleshooting, but I always uh, just hook up an external interface to the CAN bus and uh, sniff it that way. But yeah, this could basically let you um, see what the maximum and minimum voltages are in your pack, for example. And of course, these are not going to populate because there's no battery hooked to this. But yeah, you can select all this stuff um, from, from any system. And basically, Tesla's uh, CAN signals all begin with the ECU that's sending the signals. And that is like BMS, Battery Management System, and then the description of the system. And Tesla identifies all their ECUs like this. APP is Autopilot Primary. APS is Autopilot Secondary. Um, CC is the uh, basically the wall charger. Uh, CMPD is compressor. Uh, CP is the charge port. DS is driver assistance system. DIF and DIR are the drive inverter front and rear. Um, EPAS is electrically power assisted steering. Um, and there's, it's three meaning third generation. And there's a P and a S, primary and secondary, because that's a double redundant system. ESP is the Bosch uh, traction control and ABS system. FC is fast charger. GTW is gateway. HVP is high voltage protection or high voltage processor. I've heard it called both. IBST is the Bosch iBooster, which is the electromechanical brake booster, and I've done a video on that. Um, Park is Park Assist. Um, it's the ultrasonic uh, sensors, the 12 that are six on front, six on back. PCS is Power Conversion System, which is what takes the AC from the wall and converts it to DC to charge your battery. And it also takes high voltage from the battery and supplies the 12 volt system to keep that charged. RCM is the Restraint Control Module. That's the airbag controller. SCCM is the Steering Column Control Module shows the stalks there. It also has the steering angle sensor. I've done a video on that. TS is Tesla air suspension that uh, controls the air suspension on cars that have it. Obviously, they haven't released air suspension on Model 3, so it's vestigial at this point. TPMS is tire pressure monitoring system. And, uh, I think most people know that as. UIs, this, the GUI, user interface. VC front is the front vehicle controller. We've got VC left, which is the left vehicle controller, and VC right, which is the right vehicle controller. And VC sec is the vehicle security controller. And that's about all they give you access to. So, um, let's see, what else did they give us in here? I don't think... Yeah, they didn't, they didn't you know, service mode plus really doesn't give you anything extra in here, I don't think. You get audio tests. I don't know why they would make that a service plus thing. But yeah, that's about it. So uh, in conclusion, this is awesome. I applaud Tesla for making this available to all owners. And uh, the other thing they've done is the service manual is now free for all models. You can go to service.tesla.com and create a free account to view the service manuals, and that includes wiring diagrams. With that and this, you can do almost all things you need to do on a Tesla. Um, you don't really need toolbox. Um, there are certain things that you would need toolbox for, um, such as uh, 
programming keys and things like that. Let's say all your keys are lost, but Tesla won't give you access to anything that compromises security. Obviously, if you could program a key to someone's car using toolbox, that would be a security hole. So only Tesla employees can do that. Um, but anyway, I'll go over the toolbox stuff in uh, another video. I hope uh, you found this interesting and please give me a uh, likes and if you like the video and subscribe if you aren't uh, only like 25 percent of my viewers are subscribed and it makes it hard to keep making videos because um, youtube won't uh, get the word out anyway everyone have a good evening and i'll see you in the next one